May 4th, Yoshi and I decided <laughs> to dress up like our favorite princess and talk about which Star Wars games I think are the top five best Star Wars games ever. My number five favorite Star Wars game I don't think is my favorite because it is the first Star Wars game I ever played, but I think it's its simplicity that makes it so iconic, like just as iconic as the films, and that is the Star Wars arcade game. I mean, first of all, you're sitting in this, like, pod, this Star Wars pod of awesomeness, and you're playing an X-Wing pilot during the battle or the attack on the Death Star. And the whole game is you flying through the trench of the Death Star, and you're shooting TIE fighters, and they're shooting at you, and you've got gun turrets coming after you, and if you make it to the third level, then you can hear Ben Kenobi come over, and he's like, use the force. It's amazing. Even though the graphics are seriously like bare bones, vector graphics, it still gets the point across. I don't need big, flashy, fancy graphics. I don't need force powers or even a lightsaber. I do love lightsabers. But I don't need any of those things to enjoy a really good Star Wars game. And I think that's what makes the Star Wars arcade game just so perfect. It doesn't have all that. It's just you flying an X-Wing through straight lines of vector graphics and shooting down TIE fighters and gun turrets. That's amazing. And that's all I need. I really need one of those in my house. Like if I can have any other arcade cabinet in my house, it would definitely be the Star Wars arcade machine. Gotta have the Star Wars pod. My number four favorite Star Wars game is Jedi Knight Jedi Academy. I think this game definitely made my list because it was one of the first times that I got to actually be a chick Jedi who, if you pick the Chick Jedi, is voiced by Jennifer Hale, who is Commander Shepard in Mass Effect, among tons of other amazing video games. Aren't you excited? We're going to be Jedi, learning the ways of the Force, building a lightsaber. And on top of that, it was also the first time I got to customize my own lightsaber, and not just the color of the blade, but also the style of the hilt. Hell yes. And then you also could just regular, like as classic wield your lightsaber. You could dual wield two lightsabers. And they also had like a saber staff, which is basically the same thing that Darth Maul has. And then in the game, each saber style came with its own unique fight styles. Of course, I dual wield. Um, it seems incredibly dangerous, unnecessarily dangerous to wield two lightsabers, kind of like Starkiller in the Force Unleashed series, which I do not like. No Force Unleashed on this list. But it is just badass to have two freaking lightsabers. And of course, we're freaking Jedi, so we also got force powers. There was this really annoying, like, force meter that would run out when you use too many force powers because, you know, the force, it's very strong, and it kind of wears you out. Gotta take a break from the force every now and then, I guess. But with the force powers, you can, like, pick and choose which ones you wanted to upgrade and use more, just to kind of, I guess, work in your own force gameplay style. But I think the best part was in this game, it was the first time, I think in any Star Wars game, I might be wrong, but it was the first time for me as a gamer, I got to choose if I wanted to be light side or dark side. I sense a disturbance in the Force. You always sense a disturbance in the Force. The story in Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, it's still such a tongue twister to say, is the continuation of the story of Kyle Katarn is how I want to pronounce it, but I'm probably wrong because I'm really bad with names. But you're a student of his now, and if you had played my number three on my list, Dark Forces, you would recognize him immediately. Now in this game he's part of the Rebel Alliance, although he was originally part of the Imperial Army because he thought the Rebels had killed his parents, but then he later finds out that it was the Empire, so then he switches sides and joins the Rebels. One of my favorite things, and the thing that I thought made Dark Forces so amazing, was a lot of the iconic levels you got to play through. Like my favorite was the Star Destroyer level. So awesome. Plus you get to shoot a lot of Stormtroopers. Dark Forces was originally out, um, I think I played it on Mac and then it later went to PS1, but for some reason um, the Mac version got way better scores than the PS1 version did. But the gameplay was think Wolfenstein, Doom, but with Star Wars. Then going into my number two favorite Star Wars game of all time is Lego Star Wars 2 the original trilogy. What I love so much about Lego Star Wars the original trilogy is I felt it actually represented Star Wars better than some even like 
some of the LucasArts games we got. The game has a lot of moments where it's actually able to poke fun of Star Wars and a lot of the Star Wars characters, while at the same time just really representing the story really well and allowing you to play through some of those huge, big, crucial moments from the films. While at the same time mixing in a lot of just fun and lighthearted humor. Like I think there was this one time you're walking around and uh, you walk into this room and it's a room with a lot of stormtroopers just sitting in a hot tub. That's hilarious! And the great thing about a lot of those moments is they were kind of few and far between. So when they did happen, they were a lot more surprising and a lot more fun. LEGO Star Wars felt like a Star Wars game made by hardcore Star Wars fans. It was like the game took Star Wars seriously, but it didn't take itself seriously. And that's what I loved so much about it. And my number one, my favorite Star Wars game of all time, is I think a lot of you guys' favorite Star Wars game as well, and that is Knights of the Old Republic. I think what I loved so much about KOTOR is it was done by Bioware, and it was Bioware doing what Bioware does best, and that's RPGs, but just infused with Star Wars. But KOTOR wasn't your normal Bioware-styled action RPG. It was more of like, a turn-based RPG, or at least the combat system was more turn-based, but with real-time action time meters. I don't really know what they're actually called. And it was one of the very, very few non-action RPGs that I could really get into. And it wasn't just because it was Star Wars. It, it really was just the way that everything in the whole game, the characters, the world, um, how I interacted with the characters and your party members and companions. It's how they all kind of fused together that created this entire story um, that I was able to really, really just lose myself in. Like in Bioware games, um, we did get to travel with different companions or party members. And I think those were some of the coolest. I mean, we had some other, we had another Jedi, we had a Mandalorian, we had a freaking assassin droid. An assassin droid. I'm capable of eliminating a very specific type of target. That's amazing. And with these party members, they weren't just like, you know, your normal follow around behind you and the only time they ever do anything is during combat. Um, they actually, they interacted with the world around you and they interacted with you when you were having conversations with different NPCs. Then through that type of interaction, it really kind of lend itself to have these, these companions and these party members really become characters of their own. And it just kind of adds more to getting sucked into this living, you know, breathing environment that you're playing through. And then another thing that Bioware is very well known for is your good and your bad side. Throughout your playthrough of KOTOR, as you're interacting with different characters and how you're reacting to different things that are happening and your choices that you're making, it's ultimately all going to deciding on whether you're on the light side or the dark side. Kind of think Mass Effect, you know, Paragon and Renegade. If you went light side, you were a hero, but if you went dark side, you were named the new Dark Lord of the Sith. That is badass. Yes, I cannot deny it any longer. <laughs> you are the one who deserves, who deserves to be the Dark Lord. Overall, I think what made KOTOR so amazing is that there is so much about the Bioware style, how they handle story and characters and gameplay, and how they mix all of that together. Um, there's just something about that style that works so perfectly with the Star Wars galaxy and the Star Wars series and, and how the story is told in Star Wars. Those two things coming together and working so perfectly together is why KOTOR is my number one best Star Wars video game ever. So guys, tell me what is your favorite Star Wars game of all time, and how did you celebrate your May 4th? Did you have a Star Wars movie marathon, or maybe you just wore your favorite Star Wars shirt? Either way, let me know, and as always, thanks for watching. You're gonna get so many treats after this. Yes, you're gonna get so many treats. I know, I know, the tortures I put you through, the tortures I put you through.